Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Bojack Horseman Season 5. So in this video, I will give my overall review of Season 5 of Bojack Horseman. So I have to start with a spoiler warning for up to the end of Season 5 of Bojack Horseman. If you haven't seen all of Season 5, you will not want to watch this video. Otherwise, things will be spoiled for you. So, Bojack Horseman is a show i gotten into, I want to say like a year or two ago, around that time. But before that time, I had a lot of people telling me I should watch it, I need to watch it. Uh, some people on my channel, like, <laughs> saying, please review Bojack, please watch it. And I had friends I knew were saying, oh, this is an amazing show, you need to watch it. And I watched, like, the first couple episodes, and I was like, yeah, this is not for me. But there, everyone was like, no, no, stick with it, it gets great. And I found out that is what happened as soon as I got into it. Uh, I was like, I started to like the show more and more, and now I love it and think it is a classic. Now, typically, I don't cover comedies on my channel. That's what I've been saying for a while. Uh, but I, I'm starting to feel a bit more open to that and maybe uh, covering a bit more comedies. But... Here's the thing, and this is why I'm starting with Season 5. Maybe one of these days I'll go back and review all the entire show and review the earlier seasons. But since Season 5 dropped like a couple months ago, I wanted to touch on that uh, specifically. And here's the thing about Season 5. Is that even though it is definitely a comedy, there's a lot of jokes in there. Uh, a lot of silly things that would only happen in silly cartoon comedies happen. But... It's also extremely serious. It's extremely dark. Like, and it's jam-packed with like a lot of like deeper meanings and metaphors and commentary. A lot of social commentary. Now, you could argue that every season of BoJack has been like this. And there would be a good argument for that. But, in my opinion, season 5 is does this the most it is actually probably i would say the most depressing season in my opinion i know again some other people might find some of the earlier seasons a bit more emotionally impactful or or depressing but this is it's disturbing i would say in a way that the earlier seasons weren't and it's a really like deep character study of uh someone who's disturbed and, and is very complex uh, exploring all the ins and outs of social issues and personal character issues. And this is an a animated comedy about a talking horse and other talking animals. <laughs> Where, like, lots of crazy things going around and you get silly humor. Uh, and on top of all that, like, or beneath it, I should say, uh, you have these, these more complex themes... And uh, that's why I love it. Now, I think... And I was thinking about this a lot. I think season five may be my favorite season of BoJack Horseman. Uh, it's hard to say. It's either this or season two. I would, I would say that season one and two are definitely funnier. Like, I watched seasons one and two and then watched season five. And I noticed there was a huge disparity uh, between, like, the laughter part of it. I think the jokes, season one and two are just hilarious. They're just jam-packed joke after joke after joke. Uh, you don't really get that with season five, but it's not, like, as I said, season five has a lot more to say about the character of Bojack Horseman and a lot more interesting, uh, complex uh, analysis and uh, things that are open to interpretation and uh, so it's it's not it doesn't always have it's not always about a comedy even though this is a comedy show uh, Bojack has always had elements of drama uh, even and that's why I would say season two more so than season one even though I think season one and two are both the funniest seasons of the show easily season two had a much uh, more emotional story or more uh, emotional drama involved uh, than season one in my opinion that's just why I would put it up there season three I uh, just watched recently, I would have to say is by far my least favorite season of the show. I think it was the least funniest and the least emotionally impactful. And plus, like, the reason why it was hard for me to get into BoJack 
in the first place is because it focuses on Holly, the Hollywood scene. It focuses on has been actors and what the Hollywood scene is about, and that's basically what it's about. And that's a this is a subject that I can't really relate to on a personal level because I never lived in LA. I've never been involved in that kind of industry. I, I don't follow all the gossip or anything like that. I don't really care about the actors' private lives. I just like to see them perform on screen. And so it's not something I was particularly invested and interested in. I think maybe that is probably why season three is my least favorite season. It's because it, it focuses the most on that. It's about Bojack like trying to get an Oscar and being in this movie and becoming a big movie star. And I like the kind of publicity he goes through and stuff. And to me that got kind of a... I mean, you definitely get some Bojack's uh, personal character story go through and how he's very self-deprecating. Uh, and all that, uh, that definitely shines through, but not as much, I would say. Uh, season four, I did like. I, I don't think it was as good as seasons one and two, but it was better than season three. Uh, and it definitely had a lot of... I think, see, if I remember correctly, season four was the season that had an episode where it was like your where Bojack was just constantly you're a piece of shit <laughs> where he's constantly you hear his thoughts and he's constantly saying you're a piece of shit uh, which was a very good episode and it, and it gets in this sort of mindset um, but I don't know like season 5 as I said it's like some of the jokes don't land as much but uh, it, it's just the story it tells from start to finish and the way it foreshadows things and the deeper meanings into it, I just really impressed with. In fact, like this is one season, like the more I think about it and upon second viewing, the more I like it. Because when I first saw it, I wasn't as impressed. I was just like, oh, uh, it was, at least it was better than last season. But... <laughs> Like watching uh, like other YouTube videos and hearing other people's thoughts and analyze the deeper meanings and then watching it again with like totally different eyes and seeing that there's actually a lot more to it made me appreciate it a lot more. So the more I think about it, the more I like this season. Anyway, let me start by getting into some um, specific episodes. Now I'm not going to cover every episode of season five uh, because that would be a bit tedious. But I'm gonna. There's a few standout episodes that are maybe a bit unconventional and a bit different uh, that I want to touch on. Um, first episode I want to touch on is Free Churro, which if you go to IMDb is the highest rated episode of the entire show and it's the episode that everyone's ranting and raving about. Now something I mentioned in one of the live streams I did is that Bojack Horseman to me was an interesting show uh, and I'm talking about before season 5 came out. It was an interesting show like it's unique I think it's the only show really that I've ever seen where the popular opinion of what episodes are the best are pretty much the exact opposite of what I think. I can't think of any other show this is more true for. Because if I go to IMDb, and again, before season five came out, if I went to the IMDb and see the highest rated episodes and, and word of mouth and see what episodes people were talking about, I saw the top three episodes, those would be my bottom three. Uh, I mean, there's some cases like specific episodes, like with Voyager, like there's uh, Endgame, which I think is the worst episode. A lot of people put that in their top ten, or Dark Frontier, a lot of people put in their top ten, which I think is one of the worst Star Trek episodes. And then, like, uh, with Breaking Bad, there's The Fly, which I think is easily the worst episode of Breaking Bad, where many people think it's the best. Uh, but that's just, like, one or two episodes. Like, this, BoJack was the first time where it was, like, every episode. Like, the entire top three or the entire top five would be at the absolute bottom. I couldn't stand those episodes. And it seemed to start with, like, season three and season four where they have these overly, oh, look at how artsy we are episodes. Like, the worst example, I think, is the underwater one where he goes to this underwater film festival. Like, ugh! Actively, that episode actively irritated me and annoyed me. And many people think it's the, one of the best episodes of the show. And season four had a couple episodes like that. I had the, the one where he goes to New Orleans and meets this fly or whatever. I, that episode didn't annoy me as much, but I didn't really care for it. And everyone's saying that's the best. And then there's the episode towards the end where there was like a, all about his mother and a flashback to his mother or whatever. Did not like that episode at all. Uh, and a lot of people saying it's the best. And so <laughs> it's weird. Now, with season five, 
I originally said, when I did my live stream right after watching Season 5, I originally said that there w at least there wasn't an episode like that in Season 5 that everyone loved and thought was great because it's all artsy, but I absolutely hate it. But, and that's true, there isn't. But, Free Church was kind of that way because... Although I don't hate the episode, I would actually say I like Free Church. I thought it was a good episode, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's the best. I don't think it deserves anywhere near as much praise as it's getting. I don't think it's the highlight of Season 5. Um, I, think, I think it was a good, interesting episode. It was, I would say, probably one of the better episodes of Season 5. I might even say that, but not... It's not the best of the season. I think there was much... I think it's saying that, I think, sells short some of the other episodes and other storylines of Season 5, which I thought were um, more powerful. But if you don't know, if you're not sure of the episode titles, you don't know which one Free Churro is. So that's the one where Bojack gives a eulogy uh, for his mother, at his mother's funeral. So the whole episode is just him monologuing. Uh, and it's pretty much in real time where it has like a prologue at the start that shows him as a child with his father being a dick to him and then the rest of the episode is just him standing uh, at the you know at the funeral parlor like giving a uh, a eulogy and he just goes off in a rant and it was I liked it I think it was a good uh, way to sort of shake things up and do something different uh, and I think, like, hearing the introspect was very interesting in Bojack's characters. Very well written. Very well performed. Uh, they get into some deeper themes. I mean, it's kind of funny because he makes jokes from time to time. You hear, like, you can see off screen there's, like, someone with the organ or piano or whatever. Or, and sometimes they're doing the drums or whatever uh, to whenever he makes jokes. And some of his jokes are, like, really, like, ooh, really out there. But it really brings across the kind of how horrible how like traumatic his childhood was and how awful parents uh they were and how that sort of affects them and when he's giving a eulogy about his mother who died but who was pretty much i would say verbally abusive like both and as we see at the start with the prologue her father was also verbally abusive and so this is kind of what results in this uh how his um very uh dark sort of attitude is and how he you know that i talked about the previous uh season where the episode i'm a piece of shit whatever like how that sort of shaped who he is and how bitter he's become of that and ha having the the contrasting feelings of being bitter over this person who who ruined his life basically and treated him horribly but also at the same time still having this underlying love and affection that he's kind of trying to deny because his his uh uh, you know, feelings of angst is sort of overriding that, and that was actually explored really well uh, in this in this monologue. Particularly like the part where he brings up the ICU, because apparently it was one of the last things she said to him was ICU, and he's trying to debate what it means. Uh, he's talking about all the specific meanings. He, he, at first, he's like, "Oh, it's really touching." She finally sees me, but then and she brings up other possibilities. At the end, it's like, "Oh, she was in the intensive care unit. She was just reading the sign ICU." And I love that they never, they never actually give you a definitive answer of what it meant because that's more relatable to real life. Because in real life, you wouldn't know what it means. It's just something that's open to interpretation. And even Bojack even says one of the possibilities, maybe he's making it too big of a deal out of it and it didn't mean anything. Uh, and he like related it to someone, a fan of his show pointing out a continuity error in his show. I was thinking it had greater meaning. It was like, no, uh, one, of the, one, <laughs> one of the grips just left a piece of, you know, his drinking cup on the, in the shot. It just doesn't mean mean anything but it was interesting having that exploration so i do think it's a good episode and i do get why people like it but i didn't think it was the best again i think you get it was a good gimmick having the entire episode be a monologue but i don't think you can get as much character development and an interesting plot twist as some of the other episodes that have more going for it and plus the thing the one thing i will say that really bothered me about this episode is the gimmick at the end where through the entire episode you only see him like you only see his perspective you don't see who he's talking to and you don't see who is in the funeral you just see him so and to me that was like uh, obvious 
that there was going to be a joke, a gimmick, that who he was talking to would be like some sort of, uh, you know, punchline or whatever. And so at the end they revealed it was that he was at the wrong funeral and they showed like, a, you know, totally different people. I had nothing to do with his mother. Uh, and that was so expected that was so cliche to me um and they spent like the, <laughs> they build it up for too long because they spent the entire like half hour or 25 minutes or however long building up that joke and it ends up just to be a flat cliche exactly what you would expect kind of joke i think if they were going to take that long to to and i do appreciate that again the long monologuing but if they were going to take that long to build up to a joke like that they needed it to be unique they needed it to be subvert expectations to be i think it would have been more subverting of expectations if he was actually at the right funeral and there was no joke and that was the punchline <laughs> to me that would be more powerful because you're expecting it to be at the wrong funeral so when that the reveals out to be case i'm like that's really a letdown it was a real huge dud for me and i felt like it was a lot of build up to nothing, but I guess some other people might get all metaphorical and be like, well, that's the metaphor there, it's a build up to nothing, but nah, uh, <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Uh, so I, I liked the episode, but I don't think it was it was one of the best. I um, also want to talk about uh, this episode called uh, Bojack the Feminist. This this is an episode I, that had, it probably touched on um, like things about the Me Too movement and stuff the most, but it, it focused on, it had an interesting commentary because I had this actor, uh, Vance, I think his name was, who's obviously a metaphor for um, Mel Gibson. <laughs> He's obviously comparing it to Mel Gibson where he keeps like doing very despicable things, like saying, oh, I hate Jews, and, and just and just being a, a dick and just calling things out and, and being despicable to his, his daughter and stuff, and yet Hollywood keeps forgiving him. Uh, and I think that was interesting, but then he goes to go on Bojack's show, has a co-star, and Bojack's just jealous of him. He doesn't really care about any of the stuff he's done. He's just jealous that a bigger star is taking his light. And so, uh, but like Diane and other people, like, uh, she hates him. She's like, oh, because of all the despicable things she did. And, but Princess Caroline doesn't care because he's going to make the show more money. But when he quits... Uh, because he realizes simply getting the offer of the show revitalized his career, so he doesn't actually need to do the show. Princess Caroline feels slighted, and so she wants to uh, get back at him. So Bojack wants to get back at him just because he tried to steal his limelight. Deanne, uh, Deanne wants to get back at him uh, because, you know, all the horrible things he's done in public and thinks that uh, he's a chauvinistic asshole. And Princess Caroline wants to get back at him just because he dropped out of the show and he spotted it. It was personally annoyed her. Uh, so it, and in that way, I think it sort of shows, like, how um, everyone's intentions in going after some of these assholes and make may seem to be like oh they're just chauvinistic or assholes but a lot of times could be a bit more like personal or internalized particularly in hollywood and i think this episode as i said before that i didn't really like when they made commentary about hollywood but i think <laughs> this episode is does it in a really interesting way because it does sort of um, and this is something I think the showrunners talked about is how the main point is that the Hollywood, the issues with sexual harassment in Hollywood is not as simple. They can be solved with a hashtag that it's uh, inherent to the way things, because it's been ingrained in Hollywood culture for so many decades, it is sort of inherent and intertwined. And so by them trying to simply solve the issue and attack it and say, oh, Bojack's a feminist now, and wearing shirts like feminism is bay, and going on like the talk show like the squawk, and the, the hat of the birds just going squawk, and they just like misinterpret everything he says and just call it out and everyone starts screaming uh by the way it was such a hilarious joke <laughs> when i'm not going to repeat it but when when the uh host of the squawk just had this huge long spiel and the audience just repeated it back <laughs> that was a funny joke but yeah the the bigger commentary is is that you know it's definitely putting down uh 
sexual harassment in Hollywood as a bad thing. Throughout the entire season, that's a recurring theme, uh, that it is an issue, but it's also saying that you can't solve such a complex, ingrained issue simply but with a hashtag. Uh, and I think this episode gets that across first. And of course, you also get great commentary in it with stuff like, um, <laughs> Princess Carolyn and saying, oh, we finally we're going to give feminism a voice because it's coming from a man and they're actually going to take him seriously and not dismiss him as overly emotional. And, and it's interesting that they have Bojack as the, you know, the, this voice because he actually doesn't care uh, about it and he doesn't really know anything about it. He's just doing it because he didn't like the fact that other co-star was taking his wild limelight. Now, what I think is a really complex, interesting twist that I didn't really get on the first viewing. This is something I sort of picked up on the second viewing because it's something that's... it's The show, this episode foreshadows the rest of the season uh, very amazingly, and that's why I think it's really well-structured, is that in this episode, when I'm watching it for the first time, I'm relating with Bojack. I'm on his side. I'm on Bojack and Deanne and uh, Princess Carolyn's side. I want him to get that asshole Vance because what a what despicable, like he's, you know, all the despicable things he's done. He's obviously an asshole and he just played off. So like, in my mind, Bojack's the hero. Vance is the villain and that publicist, uh, Angela Bassett's character, I can't remember her name now, uh, who is in season three. Like, she's uh, evil as well because she's supporting this asshole. And so I was kind of looking at it in that black and white manner. But watching the whole season and coming back to this episode, I realized that they're purposely trying to subvert you, trying to make you feel that way. And they totally subvert that later on. And later on, in retrospect, you think, actually, Bojack is just as bad. As this guy is uh, and because at one point the guy you know the Vance guy says I'm a feminist too and I refuse to do the show because Bojack is such a <laughs> the, 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 great, the show degrades women and Bojack supports this kind of thing and at first you think oh what an asshole he's so wrong but is he though <laughs> is he really go to learn that situations are always a lot more complex than they appear. And I think this episode gets that across beautifully, particularly in retrospect. And that's why I say it's very well structured. Uh, that it gets into uh, that things are never as simple as this guy's evil and that guy's not. Uh, particularly in situations like this involving Hollywood. And I love how it gets it because it's not saying that what Vance did was okay and that you should support him. But it's saying, well maybe Bojack isn't that much of a hero either. Um, because, and the other thing is when Bojack goes on the squawk and he's putting down Vance and he was saying, oh, he keeps saying, oh, you shouldn't, yeah, choking women is bad. Obviously, you shouldn't choke women. And everyone cheers, yeah, don't choke women. And Bojack, yeah, like, oh, it's awful to choke women. What happens at the end of the season? What does Bojack do? Yeah, <laughs> that was very ironic. And as I said, that's why it's really well structured uh, setting these things up. And also, I believe it's this episode, although it might not be this episode, it might be a later episode, where Bojack is talking about the character Filbert and saying, oh, well, he's not a, you're not supposed to like him. You're not supposed to identify with him. He's just a guy. And that is absolutely... <laughs> What they're saying about Filbert is definitely what they're saying about Bojack. And that's another thing. Like, the whole thing of Filbert is kind of used as a meta example for the audience to talk about Bojack as a whole. Saying you're not supposed to agree with this character. You're not supposed to like him. He's, he's not an evil or bad guy. Uh, and I'm sort of touching on later in the season, but later in the season, Diana gave this, gave this really great speech about how there are no... Uh, there are no good guys, there are no bad guys, just guys. And that's what Bojack has kind of always been about. In the past, like, they touched on themes about how it's not about happy endings. Like, there's no such thing about happy endings. It's, real life isn't like a TV show that ends with a happy or sad ending. Life just keeps going. Has happy moments, has sad moments. There's no, uh, you know, unless, until you get to death, I suppose, you call that an ending. But still, there's no definitive, uh you know, ending like that. Life just goes on as a series of events that could be sad, could be bad, could be good, could be whatever. Now they're kind of doing the same thing with, like, 
people's characters and I love that that people themselves are complex and just an event of they could do good things they could do bad things but there's no it's not as black and white as a good guy and bad guy and that actually relates to the whole thing with Vance and Bojack because there's some good aspects to Vance as well even though a lot of what he does is pretty despicable and there are some despicable aspects of Bojack as well as we see later anyway let me talk about another episode I really like this season uh Int Sub or Internal Submarine it was like the the stage direction abbreviations for internal submarine was int sub uh <laughs> this is a really interesting uh, it was a funny episode and i loved like i was laughing my ass off at the start because it's about it's really it's a really out there interesting concept too of how they have the uh Deanne psychiatrist who only appeared uh, briefly in the season earlier and they focus entirely on her having dinner with her wife and her wife is like a corporate mediator and so the two of them are telling stories but they're not allowed to give away the actual names of their clients or the people they work with so they make up names and so we see the episode through and i love that they changed the act the opening intro because she is not allowed to call him bojack she calls him bobo the angsty zebra so we get the intro bobo the angsty zebra and we see bojack as a, as a zebra and then i, I was laughing hilariously when they brought up mr peanut butter he was something like chocolate chocolate hazelnut spread <laughs> and he was he was a brown dog and uh, i don't know the thing with uh princess caroline being like this mist of mud that was a bit confusing but then they Again, they made the other uh, psychologist even said that. Well, the, your metaphors are a bit too confusing out there, and, and it was like, and there was a lot of meta commentary. Like I was, I, I love it how they're sort of poking fun at themselves, particularly where <laughs> where the two of them were telling the different stories. One was obviously, you know, the mediator was talking about this side plot with a uh, Todd and Princess Carolyn, and the psychiatrist is talking about the main plot with BoJack and uh, Diana, and. <laughs> Of how they called us out at one point, and they were like, Well, why don't we just take turns telling parts of the story? We'll focus. I think my story has a lot more meat to it. Your story is more like a side story, a B story, shall we say. But let's just, I'll talk about this a bit, and you can talk about yours. That's how normal conversations work, right? And they were totally calling out the, the structure of a TV episode that has a main plot and the B plot, and that a real conversation would not work like that at all. And I love how they, they just called themselves. It's meta moments like that, that that really work. And plus, I just think this episode it was funny but it was also powerful it had a very strong ending which i think was maybe some of the best of the season and it's how because it, i talked about that feminist episode earlier and how uh at the end that episode ended with diane getting the tape from again what's her face angela bassett's character uh about the this is a nice callback for season three that at the tape that, that was made in season three where he admits to uh what happened in new mexico in season two uh so i love this is another thing i immediately liked about the season is all the callbacks to earlier seasons that it really feels like a continuous story and they're not just wiping the, the slate clean and being episodic they're that things you do have consequences and that's another great part of the of the show of course the the tape was vague ab about what bojack did of course in new mexico it just said oh she's only 17 i probably would have did it if, if no one stopped me so she wasn't sure what was going on so she she and the whole episode was about how she feels she couldn't talk to bojack because i think i believe this is the episode after free churros the episode after his mother died and he was yeah it was <laughs> he was trying to he ref he refused to talk he kept saying i don't want to talk about it when it was obvious that he did want to talk about it but he was deflecting and and so it was obvious is that diane and bojack were good friends but they couldn't talk to each other they couldn't express things she felt she couldn't ask him about it so she's like very sneak 
particularly like works it into the script. So at the end of the episode, when we've gone away from the psychiatrist story, so we're back to the actual Bojack is not a zebra anymore, and, and the director is in the dolphin. Um, she finally figures out because the director couldn't figure out how to write the script, so she figures it out by working in what she knows, uh, heard about that tape into the script, where Bojack is forced to read it. Uh, and that was so powerful, especially at the end where you see Bojack knows exactly what Diane did and she knows he knows and they just glare at each other. They have like this standoff uh, because it was such a sneaky and despicable way really to try to confront and corner Bojack because the whole point is that the two couldn't really talk to each other. Uh, that was great. That's, that's why I think that was one of the, the better episodes. Another episode I really liked was the Ancient History, <coughs> where we get um, Hollyhock, who's uh, the main one of the main characters in season four. Uh, they bring her back. I was a bit disappointed at first because when I saw the trailers for season five, it led me to believe that she would be in a main character throughout the season, but she really only appeared in this one episode. She had a brief cameo in episode one where she he called him in the middle of the night, but other than that, she really only appeared in this episode and. And she goes, flies out of the way, and it still shows like how traumatized she was because she was drugged by his mother. And uh, so when she she sees him with pills, she thinks, "Oh my God, you're drugging me!" So she dumps him down uh, the sink, and Bojack is like, "No, I needed those pills for my back." And so they go on this crazy adventure to try to get uh, more pills for him, but you slowly start to learn that he actually doesn't need those for his back, that he's addicted to them. And I think the reveal of that was very good. Uh, and also, like, he basically squandered, he only had this one day to spend with his sister that he really liked and really wanted to see. He squandered it looking for drugs. And I love the conclusion where he he's very dismissive of her, and she's like, look, if... You know, you obviously have a problem with the drugs, so only take them if you actually are in pain, if you get into an accident. So it ends with him purposely, like, causing an accident, which is, my God. <laughs> and this leads up perfectly to what I would think is the best episode of the season, possibly the best episode of the entire show, The Showstopper, which is the penultimate episode of the season, which... My God, this episode was amazing. That's why I say when people hold up free churros, it's good, but it's nowhere near as good as this episode. Just my opinion, of course. But the showstopper. So this is the episode where Bojack is full on, and in, in you can tell he's full on addicted to the drugs, uh, to these pills. He's totally like drugged out like crazy, and he's having a hard time distinguishing between reality and the his character in the tv show uh and the two are like blending together and just the way that this was they structured this episode and the way it played out on screen that made the audience confused as well and the trippy way they did it really put you into bojack's like mindset like to his perspective seeing things the way he sees it uh and it was just so well done uh, and because you actually like at least me as an audience member like as I was watching it and he was receiving these weird notes with the different uh, you know letterings on it that he actually I actually thought oh somebody is playing a trick on him and somebody is doing it but the more the episode goes the more you realize that it's obvious that he's just being delusional he's being paranoid because of the pills he's on and it's it shows the danger of, of becoming addicted, especially to this kind of opiates that he's on, which is extremely powerful, and uh, and it is a major issue in real life, uh, particularly in with Hollywood types, and uh, it's very. It shows you like how he's he his own personal character has to say that he has this disturbed back background. And he's very self-deprecating. He's very paranoid that everyone's against him, and taking these drugs is very amplifying that. Uh, to the point where he can't even distinguish between uh, the character in a show who's going through something similar where someone's trying to frame him for murder. And I do like how it reveals that the um, the, the show itself, the film show itself is somewhat interesting. It has a f sort of fight club twist 
where you know he says the Mr. Peanut Butter's character is actually just another uh, persona of him, and it's probably playing off Mr. Robot a bit because uh, Remy Malik also plays Flip the director. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it has that twist where uh, Philbert, yeah, the Mr. Peanut Butter's character is actually just a figment of Philbert's character, so it reveals that Philbert was actually killed his own wife, and it wasn't Mr. Peanut Butter, which explains why he came back to life, which I think is actually <laughs> brilliant. Uh, but it relates that to Bojack's character. Basically, there's a nice metaphor about how he's actually his own villain uh, there, that no one's out to get him. And it, and there is, it, I think this episode is, is really beautiful in the way that there are still a lot of comedic moments there's still a lot of comedy to be had but the dramatic and suspense aspects of it work in tangent with that very well to create a very powerful episode and the way it ends of course with him just totally going off the deep end and actually choking uh his his lover his co-star gina uh, that was just heart-wrenching it was heart-wrenching and again this is why they were saying in, earlier in the season they were making it clear bojack is not the hero here he's not a character that you want to identify with but it is an interesting character study uh it's it shows how lost he, he has become and how like the drugs certainly weren't helping and they just amplified his issues and he ends up uh, and then getting in a bit into the next episode, I just thought it was so heart-wrenching. It was such a powerful scene when uh, Bojack, of course, doesn't remember anything about choking Gina or any of this. And uh, Princess Caroline's trying to sort of, you know, fix things up and play fixer. But uh, she's not telling him what he did. And eventually she's like, he's like, look, I need to know if I'm going to go on this talk show and tell and apologize or, or play this off. I need to actually know what I did. So she shows him uh, the, the footage that someone filmed of him choking Gina. And to see that scene was so heartbreaking. It was so powerful because you realize that Bojack, how much he regrets doing that and how much that isn't him and how much he hates himself for doing that. Uh... But again, you can't entirely blame it on the drugs because it's, it's it's a it's a complex issue, and I think the show handles it extremely well. Anyway, let me get into some of the characters now. So I talked about Bojacks uh, a bit already with the episodes, but let me get a bit more into Bojack because I think the entire show has been about what a complex character this is and how he's self-deprecating but also how he wants to get better but i think this is something done very well he's a very rich character in terms of you can see that he wants to do better but he keeps fouling up but he's kind of his own worst enemy which again i think is personified perfectly in the, in the final uh, two episodes uh they when he realizes all the bad stuff he gets, he just feels bad about it. He wants to get, like several times he wants to come out to the public. He wants to destroy his life. He wants to destroy his career because he thinks he's not, you know, that he is worthless or whatever. And yet at the same time, he keeps making bad decisions. And this is a theme throughout the show that he keeps going to Diane. Can you please make me better? And I think this season makes it pretty clear that Diane, even though she's well intentioned too, she doesn't really know what to do either. Uh, she doesn't have all the answers, and so it's just it's a great sort of um, showing these you know Bojack tripping into. And his relationship with Gina was really good too, because it's obvious that he had deeper feelings for her, but she was trying to play it off like it was nothing serious. And he was like, yo, yeah, sure. And ironically, the two of them finally get, like, really serious when Bojack is just looking for his pills and <laughs> being all drugged out and accidentally, like, says something romantic that... And again, this is a comedy aspect of the show coming in. Uh, but that really worked. And it's... It, yeah, it was just a powerful season and exploring just the facets of Bojack and how, again, how fucked up of a character is, but again, he's not a bad guy. There's, the show is telling you there's no good guys, there's no heroes, there's no villains, it's just guys. And I think it does it beautifully here with Bojack. Um, also, let's talk about Diane. I touched on her a bit. This, her storyline this season was about, of course, being uh, divorced because season four ended with her uh, and um, 
Mr. Peanut Butter is getting separated. So the season basically follows her aftermath of the divorce. And we get an episode earlier in the season that deals with it, which I didn't think is all that good, but it was interesting where she goes to Vietnam. It did show uh, the complexes of her dealing with the separation, even though it was her idea, but how much it still affected her to see Mr. Peanut Butters with uh, another woman. Um, and her relations with Bojack and how that com that had that complex dynamic again where she was trying to, to steer him the right way. But in particularly in the feminist episode, is it was kinda obvious that she wasn't she didn't have all the answers either. And her perspective was a bit too simplistic. Like when she was showing him all the diagrams, like this is what society does and this is what T V does and trying to uh <laughs> tell Bojack and you find out that that is, even though there is some merit to that, most definitely, it is kind of a bit too simplistic, and that and that things are a bit more complicated. And like when she the when she confronts him about the thing in New Mexico, that was an amazing scene as well, where she because Bojack was at the Filbert thing was saying, oh, uh, this show is saying it's okay and we can feel good about ourselves, and she was saying, no, I don't. You shouldn't feel good about yourself. That's not the point of this for you to feel good about yourself. And I think she was could relate to him in the way because she had her own issues to deal with, and she could see that reflected in Bojack, and was trying to say, no, not everything's okay. You need to self-examine a bit more. Um, so yeah, I liked her storyline this season as well. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Peanut Butter. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. He he's never been one of my favorite characters of the show, and this season, I didn't have that much to do, which I actually kind of liked. Uh, we did get this episode involving him, where at the Halloween party, where and it did have where he was had uh, was falling in love with a, a twenty uh, twenty year old pug, <laughs> and it was interesting seeing um, the episode where it's Halloween, where juxtaposed where him and each of his X wise goes to uh, Bojack's party, which he forces on him, <laughs> and it was pretty funny the recurring themes in there, and I, and it kind of spelled it out maybe a bit too much, where Mr. Peanut Butter was like, "How come I always end up marrying or being with a woman who's spiteful and angsty and doesn't like people? Why does this always happen to me? What's the common denominator?" <laughs> like. Obvious the common denominator is him and they get into that in the end of the episode Of course some of mr. Peanut butter's obtuseness kind of gives charm to his character, but they do confront that where D Diane does Come up right up to him and says like it's because You haven't really grown up. So you're always going with up with people who are younger or emotionally um, emotionally younger, emotionally stunted. So the reason why the relationship always ended up not working is because they grew up and you don't. Uh, which was pretty, pretty fascinating. But it was, again, had the theme of looking inward for answers and not always blaming external factors, which was a theme this season, perhaps throughout the entire show. Uh, Princess Caroline's story was really interesting this season as well. I, because her storyline was about her trying to adopt and the issues she was having. I think I didn't really find it that funny with her adoptive you know, adoptive agency, where there was someone who was very nice to her, but as soon as she signed the check to all the money, that nice person went away, and they had this person who didn't give a shit. Uh, that kind of annoyed me. I didn't like think it was that funny, but her her character story was pretty interesting. Because, basically, it showed how Princess Carolyn was, has always been mothering uh, the characters of the show. Mainly Bojack, but also other characters like Diane and uh, Mr. Peanut Butters and Todd. Like, she tends to, like, be the mother figure. So this episode is about her actually trying to adopt to, to actually become a mother. Um, and, of course, it dealt with the uh, miscarriage that she had in the previous season uh, very nicely. Uh, it was, but what I think is really interesting about her storyline is that Bojack gets into the accident like that causes his back issues because he, you know he he wants to do his own stunts and he says that just to show off because he wants to be the center of attention that's in his character and then he gets stuck with having to do his own stunts when he doesn't really want to so he calls Princess Caroline to get him out of it because he's used to that she's always like the mother figure the 
the fixer who comes along and fixes everything. But for once, she was actually, like, I would say being neglectful of that role, which, again, it's not a role she should be in in the first place. It's unfair of Bojack and the others to treat her like this, but this is essentially the role that she has actually got stuck herself into. Um, but she was neglecting that role. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to neglect that role because she shouldn't have had it in the first place, but she's focusing more on herself, which she should do. But as a result, Bojack gets in this horrible accident. He ends up having to take these, you know, painkillers, which he becomes addicted to, which leads to the issues he has with choking her. Now, I'm not saying that's all Princess Carolyn's fault because, again, uh, it's not her responsibility to mother Bojack or some of the other characters, but that is what she's been doing. And I think it was an interesting contrast between her sort of moving away from mothering these grown men who should act like grown men on their own and not rely on someone else to be their mother or to fix everything for them. And it, it shows like the vacuum of once she uh, leaves that role, which she rightfully should, by the way, leave that role totally. But it shows the vacuum and the issues that the how immature and stunted like Bojack in particular and some of the other characters are that things and Mr. Peanut Butter and that things starts to fall apart without Princess Carolyn there mothering her. And at the end, like she has to choose like uh, between either mothering Bojack and fixing his issues or going to the uh, adoptive, you know, adopting the baby because the mother says, look, you have to, you have to come now. If you don't, I'm just going to give the baby to someone else. But she's like right in the middle of doing something very important for Bojack. And at first she doesn't want to leave that. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm just going to leave this aside. And then like the adoptive agency, you know, that <laughs> neglectful woman comes in and is like, what are you doing? This is your one chance. Don't blow it. But Princess Caroline's falling back into her behavior of mothering Bojack. It's like, no, I need to mother him. But eventually she sets that aside uh, and she goes off and, and uh, decides to put herself first, which she should. And Bojack actually works out well for him because he ends up like relying on Diane and other people, friends who give friendly advice, and then goes up to rehab. So uh, I think that, that was a nice character story for her. Now, Todd is a character who's always been historically my least favorite character of the show. In fact, that's why I wasn't saying that season two is the clear best season because I didn't like Todd's storyline season two with like the improv group. I thought that was stupid. If it wasn't for that, season two would clearly be the best. But at the moment, season two and five are kind of on par with me. And the reason why is Todd's storyline in season five was actually not that bad. Uh, I, they didn't focus on him as much as they did in previous seasons. I, he, as I said, I don't really care for this character. I find him very annoying. A lot of the time so I love that they kind of downplayed him and I love that you barely see him with Bojack this season because he's living with Princess Caroline and he, you get a few interactions with him and Bojack but it's not nearly as much as you had in previous seasons and so they do something different with him I think his storyline was probably the weakest of the season particularly to start with and he had that other uh, asexual partner uh, but he realized that they were just together because they were asexual and that's all they had in common, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so I didn't think it was a bad storyline. It was just kind of not as interesting as all the other stuff going on. And that one like, sequence we got where he went to their parents' house and the parents were expecting them to have sex and they had to lie and be like, oh no, we're not, we're really having sex. I mean... <laughs> It was kind of silly. I think it was one of the weakest points of the season, but it was kind of funny at the same time. Uh, I love... It was a good inverse of the stereotypical... Because you get the stereotypical movie or show where, like, you have these two lovers and the parents are all rigid and don't want them to have sex and they have to try to hide having sex. So they did, like, an inverse of that where the parents wanted them to have sex, which... It was a bit obvious, I think, of an inverse, uh, and it was a bit silly, particularly when they were, like, sliding around the house and lubricant. I mean, that was a bit dumb. <laughs> and, like, oh, plug the hole with your erect penis. I mean, okay. I know it's over-the-top comedy. It's supposed to be over-the-top. That's just silly. <laughs> but later in the season, 
it did get really interesting though with uh, the sex robot. Now at first I didn't like this storyline because at first it was introduced as his uh, sort of romance with um, blanking her on her name now but his childhood friend they were girlfriends when they uh, girlfriend boyfriend when they were teenagers but he learned he was asexual and she's not um, but he tries to relate with, to her by saying look here's a sex robot to satisfy your sexual needs so you can still be with me you can still be friends we can do all the things we do but if you need sex here's this robot but she's saying look I've heard that some you know, obviously she's not <laughs> keen about the silly robot thing and it shows how much Todd has missed the point entirely. And she's like, look, she tries to like hint at him. Look, some asexuals still have sex. She's trying to say you could still have sex just for my sake. You know, even even though I know that's not really a thing, you could kind of just meet me halfway here. And Todd's like oblivious to that. And, and doesn't feed into that. So at first I was disappointed that this storyline wasn't follow, followed up on. Like instead of following up on, because I think this is an interesting setup. And it's true they may follow up on this in future seasons. But instead of following up on this at all, instead we get this silly plot about the sex robot Henry Fondel, I think his name was, becoming like the CEO of the company. And the way, of course, he did it was so like over the top silly comedy. It's like, oh, you know, I want to be on top. Oh, you want to be on top of me? Like, is silly and over the top. But when I when I watch this season again, and when I think about the storyline, even though it wasn't didn't go in the direction I was hoping it would with the character exploration of Todd and his you know ex girlfriend or whatever you want to call her, it went in a total different direction. Where again it touched on issues, the commentary about the Me Too movement and issues of sexual harassment, which is, I mean, is kind of obvious, but in the funny way, where the CEO was a literal sex robot. I mean, come on, that's got to be commentary on people like Harvey Weinstein or other uh, CEOs who, who are like sex robots, so people should expect them to behave in that despicable way. Although I don't really know what they're trying to say with, uh, maybe they're not trying to say anything. Maybe I'm just looking too much into it. Maybe it's just funny comedy. But with the fact that the sex robot is being very overt, making a lot of very overt sexual references, and everyone around them is totally oblivious to it, and like, oh, and it misinterprets it as, oh, you want to go to the premiere. And then finally, at the end, he says, he finally says something that has nothing to do with sex. And it's like, I'm losing power. And then all of a sudden, they think, oh my god, he's sexually harassing me. <laughs> when he's actually not. I'm not sure if that's just there for comedy or if there's some commentary to be had there. Uh, that Because are these people actually overreacting? I mean, there's definitely other commentary to be had when, like, other people, like the other guy after, uh, the sex robot gets disgraced. The other guy offers him the job. He's like, oh, I don't care. You can come work for me. And Todd's like, uh, this is a literal sex robot. And no one's getting that. I don't know. Like, I think I did like it. It was definitely funny. Um, sometimes I was a bit confused on exactly what they were getting at here. And sometimes it was a bit too over the top silly for me. But I think I did ultimately like it. Um, I think the scene at the end where Todd kills it and he does the whole like of mice and men thing where he smacks him when he's not looking i mean that was kind of cliche and i don't think that really fits the metaphor but whatever uh, todd's storyline was nearly as bad as it's been in the previous season so that's definitely the best thing about it anyway my rating for project horse from season five out of ten is a nine excellent uh, great season Absolutely loved it. It was close to giving it a 10, but didn't quite get there for me. Uh, some some of the episodes were a bit slow, but it had so many strong points. Uh, such a great, complex, dark character study, and a cartoon comedy about a talking horse. <laughs> you got to be impressed by that. Anyway, that is it for my review of BoJack Horseman Season 5. Uh, check out my channel as I cover many other shows like Star Trek, Game of Thrones, Lost, uh, The Expanse, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.